शांत शांत शांति ओम स्थापकाय चर्मस्य सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे स्थापकाय चर्मस्य सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतार वरेष्ठाय रामकृष्णा ते नम असतो मसदमय समसो मोतिर्गमय मृत्योरमृतंगमय ओ शांत शांत शांति Let us offer our salutations to Sri Ramakrishna, the embodiment of all religions, the supreme God incarnate, who came to establish religion universal. Let us pray to Him to lead us from the unreal to the real, from darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge, from death to immortality. We have been studying from the gospel the topic, how to cultivate. love of god sri ramakrishna has given many many points regarding this topic we have dealt with this since two classes previously sri ramakrishna was adept in the path of bhakti so whatever he has experienced himself whatever he has experimented upon himself he has given us and so it is authentic and valid for spiritual aspirants to practice <coughs> shri ram krishna said cry to your mother shama with a real cry oh mind if you whole heartedly cry for the mother how can she hold herself from you if a devotee prays to god with real longing god cannot help revealing himself to him the point is do we engage ourselves in some kind of practices still we don't get results for a long time because unless the impurities of the mind are removed you can't expect the spiritual experience i should say real spiritual experience about spirituality people talk all sorts of things but i would only say they're all hallucinations experience must be followed by life face is the index of man by seeing the face you can make out what quality that person is Sri Ramakrishna said further I told you the meaning of bhakti it is to adore god with body with mind and with words Sri Ramakrishna himself explains it with body means to serve and worship god with one's own hands go to holy places with one's own feet hear the chanting of the name and glories of god with one's own ears and see the divine image with one's own eyes with mind means to contemplate and meditate on god constantly and to remember and think of his leela with words means to sing hymns to him and chant his name and glories what we call bhajans 
they're all very important whatever we do should be done with proper attention care and devotion devotion as described in narad he is suited to the kali yuga it means to chant constantly the name and glories of god let those who have no leisure worship god at least morning and evening by whole heartedly chanting his name and clapping their hands the ego of a devotee begets no pride it doesn't create ignorance on the contrary it helps one realize god this ego is no more like the ordinary ego than hinche is like ordinary greens one generally becomes indisposed by eating greens but hinche removes excessive bile it does one good sugar candy is not like ordinary sweets sweets are generally harmful but sugar candy removes acidity then shri ram could explain the various stages of bhakti nishta bhakti one pointed unadulterated determined devotion that leads to bhakti bhakti when matured becomes bhava bhava when concentrated becomes maha bhava and last of all it's prema prema is like a cord by prema god is bound to the devotee he can no longer run away an ordinary person can at best achieve bhava none but an ishwar koti attains maha bhava and prema chaitanya mahaprabhu attained them again shri ramkrishna says i and mind there is ignorance true knowledge makes one feel oh god you alone do everything you alone are my own and to you alone being belong houses buildings family relatives friends the whole universe all is yours but ignorance makes one feel i am doing everything i am the doer house buildings family children friends and property are all mine once a teacher was explaining all this to a disciple he said look god alone and no one else is your own the disciple said but revered sir my mother my wife and my other relatives take very good care of me they see nothing but darkness when i am not present how much they love me the teacher said there you are mistaken i shall show you presently that no body is your own take these few pills with you when you go home swallow them and lie down in bed people will think you are dead but you will remain conscious of the outside world and will see and hear everything then i shall visit your home the disciple followed the instructions he swallowed the pills and lay as if unconscious in his bed his mother wife and other relatives began to cry just then the teacher came in in the guise of a physician and asked the cause of their grief when they had told him everything he said to them well there is a remedy here is a medicine for him it will bring him back to life they were all very much happy to hear this but then the physician said i must tell you one thing <clears throat> this medicine must be this medicine must first be taken by one of his relatives and then given to him who is lying unconscious but 
the relative who takes it first will die. I see his mother, his wife and others here. Certainly one of you will volunteer to take the medicine. Then the young man will come back to life. The disciple had all this. The disciple was hearing all these things. First the physician called his mother. Was weeping and rolling on the ground in grief. He said to her, Mother, you don't need to weep anymore. Take this medicine and your son will come to life. But you will die. The mother took the medicine in her hand. So far so good. But then she began to think. After much reflection she said to the physician, <coughs> with tears in her eyes, my child, I have a few more children. I have to think about them too. I am wondering what will happen to them if I die. Who will feed them and look after them? That's all. She didn't take the pill. The physician next called the wife and handed the medicine to her. She had been weeping bitterly also. She was also weeping very bitterly. With the medicine in her hand she also began to reflect. She had heard that she would die from the effect of the medicine. At last, with tears in her eyes, she said, Well, my husband has met his fate. If I die, what will happen to my young children? Who will keep them alive? How can I take this medicine? In the meantime, the disciple had got over the effect of the pills. The anesthesia effect was over. He was now convinced that nobody was really, really his own. He jumped out of bed and left the place with his teacher. The Guru said to him, There is only one whom you may call your own, and that is God. Therefore, a person should act in such a way that he may have bhakti for the lotus feet of Lord and love God as his very own. <clears throat> you see this world around you. It exists for you only for a couple of days. There is nothing to it. There is a Pandit. He said smilingly, Revered sir, I feel a spirit of total renunciation. When I am here, I feel like going away, giving up the world. Sri Ramakrishna said, no, no, no. Why should we give up? Give up mentally. Live unattached in the world. Surendra wanted to spend the night here occasionally. He brought a bed and even, sp and even spent a day or two here. Then his wife said to him, you may go anywhere you like during the daytime, but at night you must not leave home. What could poor Surendra do? Now he has no way of spending the night away from home. What will you achieve by mere reasoning? Be restless for God and learn to love Him. Reason, mere intellectual knowledge, he is like a man who can go on only as far as the outer court of the house. But Bhakti is like a woman who goes into the inner court. One must take up a different attitude towards God. Then alone can one realize Him. Rishi is like Sanaka, cherished with the attitude of Shanta, Hanuman the attitude of a servant, the cowherd boys of Vrindavan like Sri Dhamma and Sudama, the attitude of a friend, Yashoda, the attitude of a mother, and Radha, the attitude of a sweetheart. O oh God, thou art the Lord, and I am the servant. That is the servant attitude. A very good one for aspirants. 
See how many points Sri Ramakrishna has given to us. An extremely simple but very effective. In the last classes we have studied the prescription given by Srimad Bhagavatam that nine forms of bhakti Shravan, Kirtan, Smaran, Padasevan, Archana, Vandana, Dasya, Sakya, Atmani Vedana. Nine. Now we have finished three. Shravan means hearing of God's leelas and stories as much as you can. Kirtan means singing of his glories. Smarana means remembering his name and presence. Now we come to the fourth way. Padasevana, service of his feet. I have seen uh, in India, not of course in America, that I used to go to temples simply feeling inspired about the sanctity of the temple. Then I would see lots of uh, women, men sitting there. Women were doing wicks. All the wicks they do there, the understanding is they give all these wicks to the temple for worship. At the same time they are hearing the pravachan discourses by the eminent uh, Mahatmas. And in between the talks they would sing bhajans. So we find Shavan, Kirtan, Smaran, all these three were being done by those people there. And it was so uplifting atmosphere. You feel as if you are in a separate world. Separate, a quite opposite world. So, we have to have different attitude. Now, Padasevana, that is, serving the Lord's feet. This is uh, actually demonstrated by Goddess Lakshmi or Parvati who are constantly engaged in serving Lord's feet. No mortal being has got the fortune to practice this method of bhakti because the Lord is not visible to the physical eyes. <clears throat> but there is a way. It is possible to serve the murti of God, the idol of God. And better still, taking the whole humanity as God. This is Padasevana. That means Padasevana is service to the sick, to the poor, to the needy people, to the whole humanity at large. The whole universe is only Vita, Virat Swarupa. Service of the world is service of the Lord. That's why Swami Vivekananda has given the most uh, impressive and significant ideal for Ramakrishna mission. Atmano Moksha Jagat So, to Serving the humanity, one can realize God. Attitude is important. Without attitude you can't serve the people. Because there are so many social organizations are there. Lot of services they are doing. Everybody calls himself as a public servant. But in what way they act, what way they behave, need not be explained. But a devotee always looks upon everyone, 
every being has the image of the god himself so with that love and devotion it does service then archana worship of the lord <coughs> worship can be done either through an image or a picture or even a mental form the image should be one appealing to the mind of the worshipper worship can be done either with external materials or merely through an internal bhava or strong feeling that is manas puja but the manas puja is an advanced form of worship which only a few people of purified mind can do the purpose of worship is to please the lord to purify the heart through surrender of the ego and love of god then vandana the soul so a part of discipline in bhakti yoga the soul so a form of cultivating love of god vandana is prayer and prostration humble prostration touching the earth with the eight limbs of the body what we call sashtang namaskar with faith and reverence before a form of god our prostration to all beings knowing them to be the forms of the one god and getting absorbed in the divine love of the lord is termed prostration to god or vandana the ego or ahankar is effaced completely through devout prayer and prostration to god divine grace descends upon the devotee and man becomes god thus the bhakti is the love of god through servant attitude to serve god and carry out his wishes realizing his virtues nature mystery and glory considering oneself as a servant of god the supreme master is dasya bhakti so one should consider oneself as a servant of god the supreme master that is dasya bhakti serving and worshiping the murtis in temples sweeping the temple premises meditating on god and mentally serving him like a servant serving the saints and sages serving the devotees of god serving poor and sick people who are forms of god is also included in dasya bhakti to follow the words of the scriptures to act according to the injunctions of the vedas considering them to be direct words of god is dasya bhakti association with and service of love intoxicated devotees and service of those who have knowledge of god is dasya bhakti the purpose behind dasya bhakti is to be ever with god in order to offer service to him and win his divine grace and attain thereby immortality sakya bhava is a cultivation of the friend sentiment with god the members of the family of nanda gopa cultivated this bhakti arjun cultivated this kind of bhakti towards lord krishna arjun considered lord krishna as his most beloved friend to be always with the lord to treat him as one son dear relative or a friend belonging to one son family to be in his companion at all times to love him as one son self is sakya bhava of the of the bhakti marga how do friends real friends love in this world what an amount of love they possess between one another such a love is developed towards god instead of towards men physical love turned into spiritual love there is a transformation of the mundane into the external there is a transformation of the mundane into the eternal the last type is atmanivedan 
It is self-surrender. In this attitude, the devotee offers everything to God, including his body, mind and soul. He keeps nothing for himself. He loses even his own self. He has no personal and independent existence. He has given up his self for God. He has become part and parcel of God. God takes care of him and God treats him as himself. Grief and sorrow, pleasure and pain. The devotees, devotee treats as gifts sent by God and does not attach himself to them. He considers himself as a puppet of God, an instrument in the hands of God. This self-surrender is absolute love for God exclusively. There is nothing but God consciousness in the devotee. He won against his own wishes. The devotee shall become one with God and lose his individuality. This is the law of being. The highest truth is absoluteness and the soul rises above through different states of consciousness until that it attains absolute perfection when it becomes identical with God. This is the culmination of all aspiration and love. It is like wave merging in ocean. The nine modes of bhakti which we had studied just now are the ways in which a devotee attains the supreme ideal of life. A devotee can take up any of these paths and reach the highest state. The path of bhakti is the easiest of all and is not very much against the nature of human inclinations. It slowly and gradually takes the individual to the Supreme without frustrating his human instincts. It is not direct assertion of God but a progressive realization of Him. Bhakti softens the heart and removes jealousy, hatred, lust, anger, egoism, pride and arrogance. It infuses joy, divine ecstasy, bliss, peace and knowledge, all cares, worries and anxieties, fears, mental torments and tribulations entirely vanish. The devotee is freed from the samsaric wheel of births and deaths. He attains the immortal abode of everlasting peace, bliss and knowledge. The fruits of bhakti is jnana. Jnana intensifies bhakti. Even jnanis like Shankara, Masudana and Shukadev took to bhakti after realization to enjoy the sweetness of loving relationship with God. Knowledge and wisdom will dawn by itself when you practice Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti is a pleasant, smooth, direct road to God. Bhakti is sweet in the beginning, sweet in the middle and sweet in the end. It gives the highest undecaying bliss. Kindle love divine in your heart. For this is the immediate way to the kingdom of God. Pray to the Lord Sing His glory, recite His name, become a channel of His grace. Seek His will, do His will, surrender to His will. You will become one with His cosmic will. Surrender unto the Lord. He will become your charioteer on the field of life. He will drive your chariot well. You will reach the destination, the abode of immortal bliss. So, you must know the technique of cultivation of love and practice it, whatever attitude you want to cherish. Definitely, results will come. We feel, even as we are practicing these methods, Sri Ramakrishna has given so clearly so definitely, you don't have any doubts about practicing them and realizing the truth.
Keshav Chand Sen said, what further worship do we need? We are having all this. Master said, oh no, my dear. Let the worship be performed according to your custom. Keshav said, why? We are getting on very well. At the Master's repeated request, Keshav began to worship. In the midst of it, Sri Ramakrishna suddenly stood up and went into Samadhi. The Brahma devotees sang, Chant, O mind, in the name, the name of Hari. Sing aloud the name of Hari. Praise Lord Hari's name. And praising Hari's name, O mind, cross the ocean of this world. The Master still stood there, absorbed in ecstasy. Keshav led him down very carefully from the temple to the courtyard. The music went on. The Master danced to the music. The devotees dancing around him. After the refreshments, Sri Ramakrishna again talked with Keshav. Soon he began to sing. Keshav sang with the Master. The black bee of my mind is drawn in sheer delight to the blue lotus flower of Mother Shama's feet. The blue flower of the feet of Kali, she was consort, tasteless to the bee or the blossoms of desire. My mother's feet are black and black too is a bee. Black is made one with black. This much of the mystery. My mortal eyes behold then hastily retreat. But Kamala Kanta's hopes are answered in the end. He swims in the sea of bliss, unmoved by joy or pain. Again they sank. High in the heaven of the mother's feet, my mind was soaring like the high kite. When came a blast of sin's rough wind that drove it swiftly toward the earth. Both Keshav and the Master were in a state of divine fervor. The other devotees joined them and sang and danced till midnight. The Master rested a few minutes and then said to Keshav, Why did you send me presents when your son was married? What shall I do with them? Take them back. Keshav smiled a little. And the Master continued, Why do you write about me in your paper? You cannot make a man great by writing about him in books and magazines. If God makes a man great, then everybody knows about him, even though he lives in a forest. When flowers bloom in deep woods, the bees find them, but the flies do not. What can man do? Don't look up to him. Man is but a worm. The tongue that praises you today will abuse you tomorrow. I don't want name and fame. May I always remain the humblest of the humble and the lowliest of the lowly. I shall stop here. Last chapter is letter. Then Gospels will be over. Chant the name of the Lord and His glory unceasingly that the mirror of the heart May we wipe it clean and quench that mighty forest fire, worldly loves raging furiously within. O name steam down in moonlight on the Lord's heart, opening its cup to knowledge of thyself. O self drowned deep in the waves of his bliss, tasting his neck at every step, bathing in his name that bought for various souls. Various are thy names, O Lord, in each and every name thy power desires. No times are sad, no rites are needful for chanting of thy name. So vast is thy mercy, how huge then is my wretchedness, who find in this empty life and heart no devotion to thy name. O my mind, be humbler than a blade of grass, be patient and forbidding like a tree, take no honor to thyself, give honor to all, chant unceasingly the name of the Lord. O Lord and soul of the universe, mine is no prayer for the you. The playthings of lust are the toys of fame. As many times as I may be reborn, grant me, O Lord, set false love for thee. A drowning man in this world's fear for ocean is thy servant, O sweet one. In thy mercy consider him as just beneath thy feet. Oh, how I long for the day when instant separation from thee, O Lord, will be as a thousand years. 
but my heart burns with his desire in the world without thee is a heartless void. Prostrate at thy feet let me be in unwavering devotion, neither imploring the embrace of thine arms nor bewailing the dwell of thy presence, though it tears my soul as in the O thou who still the hearts of the devotees, do with me what thou wilt. For thou art my heart's beloved, thou and thou alone. O Lord, lead us from the unreal to the real. Lead us from darkness to light. And lead us from death to immortality. May all be free from dangers. May all realize what is good. May all be actually in noble thoughts. May all rejoice everywhere. May all be happy. May all be free from disease. May all realize what is good. May none be subject to misery. May the wicked become virtuous. May the virtues die in tranquility. May the tranquil be free from bonds. May the freed make others free. May good be at all people. May the sovereign righteously rule the earth. May all beings ever attain what is good. May the worlds be prosperous and happy. May the clouds pour in in time. May the earth be blessed with crops. May all countries be freed from calamity. May holy men live without fear. May the Lord, the destroyer of sins, the presiding degree of all sacred works, be satisfied. For he being pleased, the whole universe becomes pleased. He being satisfied, the whole universe feels satisfied. <laughs>